Hello, hello, hello. Sir David the Bard here. <laughs> My incense is going to catch that son of a bitch on fire. <laughs> fire up. He's blessed. Look. The Spirit of God like a fire is burning and so is his computer. I think it's all right. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Anyway, Sir David the Bard, I'm coming to you from uh, the line uh, uh <laughs> Hall of Fame. The people who've lied the most uh, in this world, uh, their pictures are on the wall, and um, Joseph Smith <laughs> is right at the top. Right at the top. Now here's here's what's disturbing to the Bard, okay? I, I'm an emotional person. I, maybe some of you are. When I hear a love song, or when I see a beautiful picture of... of uh, the countryside, the mountains, the rivers, beautiful people, um, angelic type children. Uh, my heart always turns to uh, softness, mush, and um, I feel good. I feel like it's a pleasant experience. Now here's what a wonderful cult has done. Don't you ever, ever underestimate the Mormon Church's PR ability. Their children, their adults, their old people are some of the most talented people in stage, art, dance, movie presentation, and emotional um, productions. It tears at your heart. You know, here I am these days, an atheist, and happy, and when I do these videos, and I've had to come up with a couple of Mormon songs, and I go back to my childhood and think of popcorn popping on the apricot tree. <laughs> I don't know, is that a homosexual song? I don't know. And uh, praise to the man, and I know that my Redeemer lives. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Uh, when I was in the Mormon church, I, I couldn't get any blessings. It was zero. <laughs> I told the state president that, and I resigned. I said, you know, I'm not getting out of here what you said I was going to get. Anyway, don't underestimate, I've said it a second time now, the Mormon church and its ability to persuade human decisions with emotion. They can't do it with doctrine. They can't do it with procedures, policies. They can't do it with any other means except emotion. If you're um, a cancer patient uh, or deadly ill and sick and the Mormons put together a uh, movie, uh, short, whatever you want to call it, about how God is going to wrap his arms around you, Tabernacle Choir, beautiful choir. Uh, you know, I'm not into dancing to the Tabernacle Choir, but some of the Mormons are, I don't know. Uh, Anyway, uh, when you see that kind of a movie, it moves your heart. You go, that's me. That's me. I want to be with them. They understand. They understand. Well, it appears that they do. It really appears that they do. When I've had to come up with some of these songs uh, to play back, praise to the man, um, I can remember uh, being in the Mormon church. And these songs brought all kinds of visionary uh, feelings and pictures that I was in the right place at the right time and that uh, the Mormon Jesus loved me. Well, I've got a link down below. I may put two or three more links down there uh, to show you how good they are. You know, it, the, meet the Mormons. If there was anything substantial about the Mormons and wanting to meet them, the Mormon church could have produced it probably better than Hollywood. BYU, have, I graduated from BYU, they have a, um, a production down there, radio and television and live stage. Oh my God, the Mormons, there's nothing like it. I'm telling you right now, there's nothing like it. You go to BYU and you watch a stage production or a live, uh, you watch a movie, you watch a movie being produced on, uh, uh, on grounds, on uh, location, and in the studio, the painting, the artistry, the, the camera, and the angles, and the, the close-ups, and the color coordination. No one beats the Mormons. They're number one. They're number one. And a lot of that talent they use to entrap people uh, and uh, persuade people to join the Mormon church. 
um, back when I was uh, in the 60s uh, being a Mormon, uh, the Mormons constantly made uh, movies. They made, uh, um, oh God, why does it slip my mind? I don't know. Jesus, help me. Um, doggone it. I, no, I'm sorry. I'm just old. Nothing I can do about it. But anyway, we produced many, many movies in those days to persuade non-members uh, to come into the, the Mormon church. Um, they've continued to do that. There are commercials on TV. You sit and watch a Mormon commercial on TV, it's better. It is better than anything you will ever see in Hollywood. Now, what I'm trying to bring out in this video is, as human beings, emotion is very important. When we fall in love, sometimes it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's our feelings, it's the chemistry, it's the I need to be with that other person. When uh, the Mormons change jobs, they always say, Jesus, talk to my heart, and uh, I'm going from a CEO down to the garbage man. <laughs> Jesus told me. So be careful. Not just the Mormons, but I'm telling you, they're number one. I'll give them the Academy Award. They're number one in deceiving people with such beautiful music, choirs, movie productions, houses, sets, um, temples. It looks like heaven. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> From the bard. Um, <laughs> many things look like heaven. Uh, my uh, third wife, uh, yeah, her name starts with a J. <laughs> so is the second. So is the third. Anyway, my third wife, um, cheerleader, head cheerleader. <laughs> I always tease. I always say, you know, I know why Jeannie was the head cheerleader of the football team. <laughs> anyway, she was good. She was good. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Many times things that look good <laughs> come up and bite you on the ass. Be careful. Certainly our emotions have something to do with our life. And it should. It's there for a reason. <laughs> but so is this. <laughs> our brain, you know, when you uh, marry somebody <laughs> from Oklahoma, <laughs> somebody who was screwing in 11th grade every guy that lived <laughs> in Oklahoma, who had to have special counsel to get on a mission because the first president, he said, man, this girl's <laughs> vagina is hot. We've got to calm her down. She goes on a mission and she comes home in the first month or so and she's screwing the elders form president in the back seat of the car in the BYU parking lot. Now she was beautiful. Oh, every part of her was beautiful. <laughs> and I fell for it. No brain, <laughs> just heart. And I was uh, crazy about her. Came back and bit me on the ass. Ended up taking my kids from me. Uh, my job, my money, my house, God, I can't even name. I just went to zero. All she left me was a box of naked pictures of herself, and uh, I, I blessed the, the day that happened. I, I sent them to her new state president and her new husband. But anyway, it looked good, and I had the feeling. I had a testimony. That's what the Mormons call it. If you have a little palpitation here, uh, it's not quite quad bypass. <laughs> it's the, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Well, anyway, what I'm saying is when we go to buy things, uh, when we go to join organizations, when we go to marry, when we go to um, uh, uh, use our money and our hard work for something that we want, many times it looks good. And we have a feeling it's the right thing to do. These days, my mind now says, <laughs> it feels good, but what, what are the common, reasonable facts. If my daughter comes home with her boyfriend, <laughs> the older one won't, well, she's, she's a lesbian, but let's say she comes home with her lesbian uh, girlfriend. She says, Dad, I want to marry her. Say, okay, can I know a little bit about her? Uh, why is she bald? <laughs> why does she shave all of her hair off? Oh, well, she thinks it looks cool. Well, all right, I guess that's a matter of opinion. 
Uh, why does she have four rings in her nose? Uh, in the Philippines, we put those in caribou so we could lead them around. Oh, oh, she, uh, she, that's modern. That's, that's cool. And how'd she blow her nose? Dad, don't ask that one. Okay. Well, uh, what's her education? Uh, well, she dropped out in seventh grade. Well, why'd she drop out? Well, she was pregnant. This is how a lesbian get to be a pregnant. Well, she didn't know she was a lesbian then. <laughs> So she has a four-year-old boy? Well, yeah, and two girls. Okay, does, does she have a job? Uh, no, uh, she believes uh, that she needs to be a homemaker and be at home cooking for me and cleaning the children and sending them off to school. So she doesn't work. No, no, she doesn't work. Uh, well, you know, is she a good person? Well, yeah, she was framed several times down there on those felony charges. You know, she doesn't take drugs anymore. And, um, you know, they set her up. They put the drugs in the back seat of her car. You know, 800 pounds of marijuana and, and, and meth and cocaine all stuffed in her trunk by the police. Hundreds of pounds of it. And uh, so, you know, she's pretty innocent. I would say, Abigail, could you do better than this? <laughs> See? Here, Abigail wants that girl. Here, she's not thinking. She's not thinking. So anyway, please, and I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to myself, I, you know, I use the camera for therapy, if you get anything out of it, fine, I'm getting something out of it, don't buy philosophies, religion, cars, houses, <coughs> that look too good to be true, they are, look in, <coughs> I'm sorry, look into the, um, the background, the history. Do your homework. If we don't do our homework, we deserve to get screwed. We deserve to get screwed if we don't do our homework. So, you want to join the Mormon Church? God, join the Mormon Church. Call the missionaries and have them dump you in the water, baptize you, and uh, make sure that if you're girls, you're not wearing any underwear under those baptismal clothes because uh, that's why we all show up to a baptism in the Mormon Church. Anyway, Let's decide what is right for us. Let's do our homework. Then let's put our mouth and our money and our time and talents and energy into the things that we know are reasonable and feel will do us some good. Now, the Bard store is open. <laughs> My little girl Allison came in yesterday and said, Dad, tell Mark I want shoes with the Bard face on it. I said, honey, I don't know anything about this. I have nothing to do with it. This is Mark and his uh, bipolar idea. <coughs> He's a smart little guy and uh, he deserves any money that he gets from this. I get nothing. I bought a hat. I've been tracking it. It has little feet on it. <laughs> it's in Arizona right now. It's coming towards Kangaroo City. Uh, Mark didn't give me a discount on it. My wife was, you don't get a discount on barred clothes? I said, no, honey. I'm just a regular, ordinary person and I paid, you know, for the barred hat. So, anyway, she wants barred shoes. Be careful. If you buy barred underwear, there may be consequences to that. They may be good, they may be bad. You know, when you get to the Golden Gates up there and Jesus is checking everybody, he'll say, are you wearing your garments or do you have barred on your underwear? Barred on the underwear, first class, you're in. You Mormons? Stay outside. There's a ladder that you Mormons need to climb down with those garments. Everything has consequences. Everything that we make in our decisions, we have to live with. So, uh, the Bard store is open. I think you can Google it somewhere. I don't know, online somewhere. There's a blog there that if you want to get on it, I have not been on it yet. And the Bard store does not represent the Bard. Okay, I've, I've given Mark the rights to use my image and my videos. And, uh, you know, he, I trust him. Uh, in fact, even if I don't trust him, how's it going to hurt me? How's it going to hurt me? If it helps him make a little buck and it makes my daughter go, Dad, you're famous. You're fa I said, no, I'm not famous. I'm on underwear pants. That doesn't mean I'm famous, honey. Famous means you're up on the stage and the lights are on you. I'm under their, their Levi's. <laughs> but I have boldly gone where no man has gone before. So anyway... The Bard store is open, the blog is there, and uh, my uh, four 3D whatever little Mormon friend, Ron, if you want to use 
my stuff, try to make a few bucks. I only ask you not to tithe it. <laughs> Do what you want. Give all your money to the Mormon Church. I don't care. It doesn't hurt me. So, I still have health and enable me on the bone. Strength and lungs the same. Power and priesthood be upon me and upon my posterity through all generations of time and throughout all eternity. Take a look at the barge store. I'm not selling anything. Mark did say he was donating 10% of his proceeds to hungry Filipino children. I have nothing to do with that. I have nothing to do. I'm just giving him a quick little advertisement here and hope his, his store goes well. I have uh, two uh, gals, Anna and Allison, and they're thinking of uh, buying the underwear and displaying it on uh, Vic Victoria's Secrets, and uh, then I will be famous. <laughs> then I'll be very, I'll be over at Victoria's Secrets. Hey, let me see you put those panties on there. <laughs> really what I wanted, though, is I kind of wanted the Bard uh, logo and, uh, and the, the picture there that Mark has got on the front of uh, women's uh, garments. I think that's a good idea. Just put them on the crotch of women's garment. There's the Bard. You're not sleeping with Joseph Smith and Brigham Young and, and Monson. You're sleeping with the Bard. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this Bard's gone.